ultimately then is my number one choice. Hey Reptile fans, this is Wally Kerr with Supreme Gecko. I'm guessing you're here for one of two reasons. Either you just purchased a reptile and you're looking at the setup and you want to make sure that you're keeping it the best that you possibly can, or you have a reptile or several and you're looking at the setup and the same reason you want to make sure that you're absolutely caring for your reptiles the best that you can. And what is the biggest concern that you're going to have? It's going to be heat. How do you provide the correct amount of heat to your reptiles to make sure that they're safe and your environment is safe as well. Today we're going to talk about the three types of thermostats that you can use for your heat mat to provide heat to your reptiles. We're going to look at four different affordable thermostats that you can use for your heat mats for your reptiles. And at the very end, I'm going to show you which one I prefer. You might be surprised. Your reptiles need heat, right? I know that. You've purchased a heat mat or you're thinking about purchasing a heat mat you know you need a thermostat, right? Nope, sure don't. Hang on, we'll cover that in just a minute. You know there's a difference between thermostats. So there's three different types of thermostats. You knew that, right? No, I don't. Okay, we'll cover that too. And in a really, really fun way that will help you understand the difference between the three different types of thermostats. Then we'll take a look at four thermostats that I purchased from Amazon I'll do a quick review and I'll select the one that I would purchase in the future. This will be the thermostat that I think is the best value in my opinion. In your opinion. Yes, in my opinion, that you can get for your heat mat for your reptiles. Hey, what kind of reptiles are you keeping today? Let me know in a comment below and let me know how you're providing heat to your reptiles. And maybe during this presentation, I'll go ahead and feed the fish while we're at it. Hey fellow reptile keepers, I have something very, very special to announce. We're going to do a giveaway of one of the four different thermostats that we're going to review today. And it's going to go to you at the end of August 2021. All that you have to do is put in a word, a secret word that you'll find out at the end of this video. Put that in the comments below. And at the end of August 2021, we'll pull one of the names that's made a comment with this special word in it and I'll send you out this unit. It's going to be opened, it's not going to be used. Okay, I am back. I had to go downstairs, get some frozen brine shrimp. Let's let it go ahead and thaw, and then, then I can feed the fish. But let's talk about reptiles. As you can see on my side, I have the four products that we'll review later, but let's talk about your reptile and its needs for heat. Have you heard of ecotherms? It's where reptiles will seek out the sun or the radiant heat from rocks in their surroundings so that they can warm up and they can establish their metabolism. But they can't live in this higher heat environment. They need a gradient. They need a warm side and they need a cool side. And they need the ability to go between the warm side and the cool side. So in our captive care, we need to provide a heat source for our reptiles. And a lot of times that can be a heat mat or a ceramic heat emitter. But these heat sources are designed to be off, unplugged, or on all the time when they're plugged in. So as keepers, we need to regulate the amount of heat that we're providing to our reptiles, and the best way to do that is through a thermostat. Not quite thawed all the way, so let's talk about the three different types of thermostats. First of all, there's dimmers. Now we're all familiar with the common dimmer switch for a light fixture in our houses. It's the same principle. The more you raise it, the more power electricity you provide to the heat source. The lower you put it, the less power you provide and the less heat that you get. The second type of thermostat is called an on-off thermostat. That's where it goes on and provides a certain amount of heat and then it goes off. And as the temperature lowers from the probe on the thermostat, that reaches a certain amount of temperature, usually about a degree lower than the required temperature, that thermostat goes back on and it raises the temperature again and then goes off again. So it's a constant on and off situation. The third type of thermostat is a pulse proportional thermostat. These work by going on, raising the temperature to the desired temperature 
and then they go off for a very short amount of time. The temperature drops a little bit and then they go on real quick and bring that temperature back on. So it's a constant on off, but in really, really quick pulses. Does this sound confusing? It did for me. I've done a lot of research on this and I just couldn't put it all together. Well, I put together a real quick example using water and I hope that this works. How was that demonstration? Did it help you understand the three different types of thermostats? I hope it did. For our requirements, we could use any of these three different types of thermostats, but we're going to select the on-off thermostat in our example. The first option, a dimmer switch, could be used, but we're not going to because of two reasons. Number one, it's a little bit of a safety hazard. It's hard to hook up. It's a little bit complicated. And number two, as your room temperature rises, you have to go back, check, and adjust your dimmer switch. And as the room cools, you have to go back and adjust your dimmer switch. It's a little bit complicated in that regard. And we certainly could use a pulse proportional thermostat. But again, for our requirements, a single heat mat or a couple of heat mats, we don't have to go to that extreme. A pulse proportional thermostat is just a little bit expensive for our purposes. Pulse proportional thermostats can range from $90 all the way to four to $500. Again, the four thermostats that we'll be looking at are on-off thermostats, and they all have commonalities about them. They all have a digital readout versus an analog readout. And this is really, really important so that you can read exactly instantly the temperatures that you're setting and the temperatures of the area that you're measuring. They all have at least one three-prong grounded outlet. As well, they're all in that $20 to $50 range, so far less than the pulse proportional thermostats. Before we get into looking at these thermostats, I want to point out three very, very important notes that you should keep in mind. Number one, use a very reliable measurement tool like a heat gun so that you can make sure absolutely the temperature that you're reading. Number two, each one of these thermostats has a probe. You want to make sure that you tape down that probe, use it according to the instructions so that you get an accurate measurement. And third, test your temperatures frequently. Do that measurement at least once a week, every two weeks. Just make sure that your thermostat is working, that everything is working correctly for the safety of your animals. I'll go ahead and provide a comparison chart at the very end of this presentation on the four different types of thermostats we're testing here today. The four thermostats that we'll be reviewing today are the BN Link coming in at $20, the Inkbird coming in at $30, the Pi Meter coming in at $40, 
and the Jumpstart coming in at $48. Let's check each one of these thermostats out. The first one that we're going to look at is the BN Link. It's a pretty straightforward thermostat, easy plug-in, easy accessibility. The suction cup has no value whatsoever. Easy readout, easy to set up. It's very simple, very straightforward. Pretty standard six foot cord. Next, we're going to look at the Inkbird. Now, after a lot of reviews, a lot of people are really, really liking this Inkbird. This again has a nice feel to it, easy readout, easy to set up, two prongs instead of one. But what's really weird about this is, is that there's only one probe. Two readouts instead of one. I can see this is very straightforward to use, and I can see why a lot of people recommend the Inkbird. Let's go ahead and look at the next thermostat, the Pymeter. Pretty much like we've seen with the other thermostats, very straightforward, nice construction. Two outlets, two probes. This is huge, two probes, two outlets. So you can run two different devices if you want with this thermostat. And finally, we come to the jump start. You can see this is commercially packaged. It's for uh, using for plants, heating plants, but it's also used a lot for reptiles, for heat mass for reptiles. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. Okay, we have the jump start out of the box. Again, same as the other three thermostats, uh, six foot cord, one probe, one outlet, um, easy to set up, easy to read, uh, good construction. I think this is pretty much the equivalent of the other four from a device standpoint. Let's go ahead and test these four thermostats out. Before we do the testing, I wanted to really quickly show you some customer ratings on these four products. And it seems like every product is rated between 4.4 to 4.7. I'm kind of surprised surprised by the pi meter being at a 4.7 but i'm not surprised that the inkbird is at a 4.7 the highest of the four different products
At this point, we've seen all four of these thermostats set up, how they perform, how they work. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the pluses and minuses and ultimately which one I would choose if I were to buy one of these thermostats right now. I put together a pretty cool little chart that hopefully will help you understand more about these four different thermostats and we can run through the descriptions on each one of these. I'm going to point out real quick that all four of them have a max load of about the same, a thousand watts. We'll never ever get to that point with the heat mats that we use for our reptiles. If you're setting this thermostat up for a space heater or something like that, you really, really have to watch the wattage of the piece of equipment that you're going to hook up to this thermostat. You can also see that each one of these has temperature ranges from the 50s all the way up to the 100s. These are certainly, again, within the ranges that we're going to use for our reptiles. I've arranged the four products by price. We can see BN Link at about 20 bucks, Inkbird about 30, Pi Meter at 40, and ultimately the Jumpstart unit at 48. These prices may vary depending on the timing. From a performance standpoint, I would say all four of these units worked about the same. Little differences here or there, but none of the differences were significant enough for me to choose one over the other. But here's the big difference. Let's take a look at the last two categories here. For BN Link, and the Jumpstart unit, both of those had one outlet. For the Inkbird and the Pi Meter, both of those had two outlets, with the Pi Meter having two probes, one for each outlet. That might be a big difference to you. Do you have two units? Do you have a heat mat? And maybe you want to run a fan as well? If that's not a game changer to you, then that really doesn't make a big difference in the overall picture. Let's look at special features. The BN Link and the Jumpstart are both super, super easy to use. Press the set button, select your temperature, you're done. The Inkbird and the Pi Meter are a little bit more complicated, but there's YouTube videos all over the place on how to set these units up. I mentioned before that the Inkbird has two separate outlets, and that's two separate controls for both outlets. That's pretty significant. As well, there's two different displays, one for the current temperature and one for the temperature that you've set to regulate at. Finally, for the Inkbird, you can set this thermostat to run on a daytime temperature and then on a nighttime temperature as well. Again, that might be pretty important for you. And finally, for Pi Meter, there is an alarm that if the temperatures go too low or too high, you can set the temperature range, an alarm will go off. Let's say that you have a temperature set at 95 and the temperature actually reaches 108 or 110, something like that, an alarm will go off. If the temperature falls below, let's say 85 degrees, an alarm will go off. Again, if that's important to you, that's a pretty big feature on the Pi Meter. And what's my verdict? Which one would I choose? Well, folks, after all the testing, after putting together all of the data, after doing this video, I'm still stuck on which one I would choose. The one that I wouldn't select is the Jumpstart. The Jumpstart is a little bit higher priced. It's more popular in the hobby. It's ETL certified. If that's important for you, then go with that one. But just the price range alone puts that on the outside of the, then the three that I would select. I like the BN Link from a price point. It's certainly the lowest at about 20 bucks. I like the Pi Meter for all the bells and whistles. It's a really super nice unit, but at $40, it's a little bit higher than I would want to go as well. Ultimately then, is my number one choice. Hey, you stuck around until the end. That's so cool. You're waiting for the special word, aren't you? Well, that special word is, what should we make the word? Let's make the word heat. So if you put the word heat down below in a comment, only do it one time. I'm only going to count it one time. Put the word heat down below. And at the end of August, 2021, we're going to go, I'll draw a name and that name, that person, if it's you, will receive one of these thermostats free of charge. I'll pay for shipping and I'll send it to you as a special gift for watching this video. So press pause, go down below, and put in the word heat. Ultimately then, the Inkbird is my number one choice. It has a good price, 
It has a lot of the features that I really like. It has the two outlets. It has the day-night temperature settings that you can use for some of my geckos, especially Australian geckos that require a little bit of a drop at night but still need some warmth. That seems like a feature that I could really, really use in a, a thermostat unit. So my choice, again, is the Inkbird. We have some really, really cool geckos here at Supreme Gecko, and they're very, all very, very important to us. And I'll put a link here so you can watch a video of some of these cool geckos. But your pet animal, your pet reptile is very important to you. I hope the information here that I've provided makes sense. If you have some opinions on any of these thermostats, if you're using a thermostat today and it's one of these and you have an opinion or you're using a different thermostat and it works for you, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear what your, your thoughts are on this. Thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next video.